What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a huge Liverpool takeover update video because the Telegraph is reporting that the former bid to buy a Liverpool football club with a full takeover is expected uh, next month. Uh, the chief football writer Sam Wallace says that the auction to buy Liverpool are in full swing right now and all interested parties are submitting uh, their bids or in the process of submitting their bids uh, to Liverpool Football Club to buy Liverpool Football Club and this is exactly what Liverpool fans needed to hear after the yesterday's absolute disaster show against uh, Brighton and it, which was dubbed as Jurgen Klopp's worst game in his whole managerial career he himself admitted that and he has been in charge of seven years for Mainz seven years in Dortmund and now I think seven or eight years with Liverpool so that's uh, really awful and um, there needs to be change in the ownership structure because it looks like FSG have given up on uh, Liverpool and they have given up on Liverpool's season and in this article Sam Wallace uh, mentions that the football world is changing and that's big the big evidence is Chelsea's new ownership uh, by Ted Todd Bowley and Baghdad Egbali this is a joint ownership a consortium kind of ownership and uh, of course uh, Liverpool fans are watching uh, with envy that Chelsea are dropping 100 million euros on Mudrik, the Shakhtar Donetsk winger and they hijacked Arsenal's deal and Arsenal pulled out of the deal because they just don't want to pay, pay 100 million euros for an unproven player and uh, I think uh, this is the kind of investment that Liverpool need in their midfield department if we are to compete with Man City, Man United Chelsea, Arsenal, Tottenham in the future and what's uh, really really upsetting to me is that Liverpool's uh, revenue and Liverpool's uh, bank accounts are actually richer than uh, Chelsea or even Tottenham or Arsenal yet they are outspending Liverpool continuously in the past three, or e three years and if, if you look at the makeup of Liverpool's midfield going into next season if you don't count the players that's con that uh, contract expires in the summer we will have uh, Fabinho, Thiago, Henderson, all 29 or above 30 years old, and we will have youngsters like Pajetic, Curtis Jones, Fabio Carvalho, Harvey Elliott, uh, who are like 21, 22. We don't have literally any midfielder who is between 22 and 29 years old going into next season. How did Liverpool let this happen? That's what I want to know. That's what I want to understand. This is a really, really awful situation and awful planning in terms of transfer strategy and what's even more painful to me is that uh, Liverpool in numerous seasons have finished 30 plus points above Arsenal 30 plus points above Tottenham above Man United and yet it looks like Man United and Arsenal will be challenging Manchester City for the Premier League title they were also Rens uh, last season uh, two seasons ago three seasons ago and yet um, Liverpool are finding themselves in mid-table mediocrity with no sign of improving and I think Jurgen Klopp has to change the tactics massively we can't keep playing the Thiago um, Fabinho Henderson midfield I think Thiago potentially Fabinho should stay and we should uh, play Naby Keita there we should play Oxley Chamberlain in the midfield area we should play uh, you know a 4-4-2 formation maybe with Salah more central because Salah was isolated out wide so so much and that's not where he's the most dangerous he doesn't have an incredible amount of pace uh, Salah to constantly beat his man on the wing and he is also very isolated there so Liverpool need to make tactical changes tactical tweaks and after the Brentford horror show I thought Jurgen Klopp would change the midfield yet he didn't he changed the tactics slightly which didn't suit Liverpool at all why stick Cody Gakpo up front when his back best position is left wing he, we should have played Cody Gakpo as the left winger, Mo Salah up front and maybe Ben Doak as the right winger from the start or somebody else at the, in the right wing position that would have been even better than just uh, you know sticking Salah out wide 
playing Kodegakpo up front and Oaks on the left wing. Oxley Chamberlain probably should have played in midfield alongside maybe Nabi Keito and Thiago and uh, and Henderson in a in a 4-4-2 or a diamond formation, something like that. We could have played uh, you know a diamond actually with Kodegakpo and Salah up front, um, Oxley Chamberlain behind them, and then uh, on the in the base of the diamond, Fabinho and then Oxley Chamberlain and Thiago next to each other and the width would be would have been provided by Trenox Ronald and Henry Robertson I'm just brainstorming on my ideas there are loads of solutions to Liverpool's problems what is clear is that with the current midfield Henderson and Fabinho can't run anymore you can't press high because you left you leave yourself so exposed the teams run through Liverpool's midfield like nobody's there and Thiago pressing as a number 10 yesterday was absolute suicide he's actually our best midfielder and probably alongside Trenox, Ranon and Allison, the the players who can come out with that game from that uh, game uh, with any credit uh. and Sam Wallace in the Telegraph says that Newcastle United are already coming up fast and their transformation on the ready how turbocharged by the Saudi Arabia public investment fund led consortium tells the clubs trying to compete with them that the clowning around is over there is a way now that a billionaire can make the impact of his wealth count quickly it took Abu Dhabi his Man City only four years to win their first Premier League title but the say at the same stage uh, that Saudi Arabia and Newcastle are now in f 15 months in City were still outside the top four so Liverpool cannot afford uh, to wait around because other pa clubs are passing them by very very quickly and the owners have to sell Liverpool Football Club as soon as possible so this new era with new owners and the uh, correct uh, correct transfer strategy needs to happen and it is needs to start it needs to happen right now otherwise Liverpool are going to be left behind of course we shouldn't look at uh, the Brighton game in isolation because we basically missed uh, Darwin Nunez our best uh, and most informed attacker at the moment uh, and his relentless running and pressing and, and uh, high energy and work rate and intensity was really missed and once he come back comes back attacking wise I think Liverpool will be fine because we are actually creating as many chances as we did last season maybe we are not converting as many but that those the goals will come what is the problem is the midfield and the defense Joao Matip made an absolutely monumentally big error twice he could have passed to Trenox Ronald at the beginning of the second half he was wide open on the right wing and, and he ignored him and then he misplaces a pass Brighton straight away score but it was inevitable it felt, felt like because Brighton were so much better better clearly outclassed Liverpool but if you look at the stats uh, that this season Liverpool's opponents entered the Liverpool's penalty area 23% more than last season the Liverpool entered the opposition's penalty area about the same as the previous three seasons but last season we we got 12 entries to into our penalty area on average this season it's up to 17 which is a huge increase it's a uh, it's a uh, basically a really really a lot and but the most troubling statistic is that um, accurate passes into Liverpool's penalty area have increased by a whopping 40% it was 4.3 two and three seasons ago last season it was 4.8 but this season from 4.5 on average it's up to 7.8 passes deep completed passes into Liverpool's penalty own penalty area which is a really really big and damning statistic this shows that Jurgen Klopp's uh, high pressing has unfortunately disappeared opponents are having the luxury of picking out passes into Liverpool's penalty penalty area with little pressure applied to them any of the, the deep completed passes may result in a shot across pass from close range with the following shot a corner or other kind of danger near Liverpool's goal Liverpool's opponents made 80% more deep completed passes compared to previous seasons average index which is a huge increase and it's very very concerning and also it shows that Liverpool's gegenpressing pressing is just not working this season because the Liverpool players the, the current players who are playing can't run can't press can't maintain this high intensity playing style that Jurgen Klopp insists on Liverpool playing and I think we should change the structure we should 
slightly change our playing style, maybe drop back a little bit, not press as much. And also Liverpool's opponents have had 54% more shots on target this season compared to the previous campaign. And uh, the goals conceded department is up from 0.7 last season to 1.3 goals conceded on average per game, which means that Liverpool concede 50% more goals per game than in the title winning season, which was 0.87 and 90% more goals than last season. I mean, it's pretty ironic that last season our defense was actually better than the Liverpool's title winning season. And this season we concede 90% more goals than last season. And also what is the craziest statistic that I read is that Liverpool have lost as many games as in the 2018-19, 2019-20 and the 2021-22 season combined. So Liverpool lost as many games in the Premier League this season already than in those three seasons combined, which is just mind-blowing to me. And also, just to blow your mind even more, Manchester City in the last 10 Premier League games, as awful as Liverpool have been, they have only collected one more point than Liverpool, which is absolutely mind-blowing. When I saw that, I, I said, surely that can't be true. And I went to check. And yes, it's true. Liverpool have six wins and four losses, amounting to 18 points in the last 10 games Man City have uh, I think six wins one draw and three losses something like that and 19 points uh, in total and uh, Arsenal are leading that table as well so it looks like maybe Man City and uh, their relentless pursuit of uh, you know 90 plus point seasons in the past four years that took the toll on Man City's team as well and maybe Erling Haaland's goals have been papering over the cracks uh, at Man City because also there a lot of their players also haven't been replaced in the past three or four years even though Man City tried to refresh their squad they are still have some aging players and also Erling Haaland is regressing to the norm which is inevitable for strikers uh, who saw who go on a mad scoring run at the beginning of the season they, they slow down inevitably during the season because you just can't uh, score uh, one one and a half goals every game on average uh, because the Premier League is very very tough and once you mark Haaland out of the game Man City who largely with their attacks go through Haaland their uh, style a little bit falls apart they are relying too much on Erling Haaland and also previously the goals were spread around the Man City team now almost like 70% of the goals come from Erling Haaland and if you stop Haaland then uh, Man City um, their problems uh, are more visible and uh, you can see it more and also probably Man United's winning goal shouldn't have stood yesterday because Rashford was in an offside position and he interfered with play I think well, that was pretty clear but somehow VAR gave the goal there was a similar situation in Liverpool's game, not as significant, but Trenox Ronald was ushering the ball out of play and he was deemed offside, even though he didn't touch the ball. So how is that situation different uh, to Marcus Rashford's situation? Because Rashford also didn't touch the ball, but he was interfering with play. So either both are offsides or none of them are offsides. But you can't give offside for Trent and not offside for Rashford, even though I hate Man City, but I don't want Man, I hate Man United probably even more, but I don't want Man United to win the title. If I had to choose, I would choose Arsenal to win the title. But if I have to choose between Man City and Man United who wins the title, I would choose Man City all day long because I hate Man United with a passion. But yeah, let me know what you think about everything that I talked about in this video. I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. See you later. Goodbye.